As you've heard, I was a student at Norwich City College, and uh, I do think that that event was one of the hinges on which my whole life turned. I have nothing but the most enormous admiration for the college, for the role of such colleges within society, and particularly within a community like Norwich. I did want to say one, of, one or two things about uh, how I got to Norwich City College. It's, uh, it's not a pretty story, uh, but it's uh, true, and, uh, and it's my own. And, and of course, every one of those little red cylinders containing a diploma or a degree certificate has a story behind it, because everyone to whom I pass it has done something extraordinary to earn it. They've, um, they've concentrated, they've worked, they've found things inside themselves they may not, may not have known they had, and they've done something remarkable. And they all need our applause and our support for such a thing, because I know just how difficult it can be, uh, especially, I suppose I ought to say, for those more mature uh, uh, recipients of diplomas and, and degrees because we live uh, in an age in which you're supposed to do things at the right time. Uh, you're supposed to get your O-levels or GS GCSEs at this age or A-levels at that age, your degrees and diplomas at another age. Not everybody lives according to such a strict calendar. Some of us have um, other ways of doing things. My own, um, my own achievement was to be expelled from a very large number of schools on a regular basis from the age of 13 onwards. Uh, I was expelled from a school in, uh, in Rutland, I was expelled from uh, a school in Norfolk, I was, uh, then left the, uh, the Norfolk College of Arts and Technology in Kings Lynn. Um, and now I want, as, a, as, as it were, as a film director, in the film of my life, I want you to picture the scene of me aged um, just 17, 18, just turned 18, um, I'm curled up on the floor of a prison cell um, and I've asked the lighting di director to cast the shadows of the bars across my body as it's racked with heaving sobs and a picture a bit of straw and possibly a rat crawling over me. Um, this I think of as the low point in my life. I'm, I literally turned 18, I think, three days earlier um, and I've been cast in jail. Um, of course you don't want to know what put me in prison, do you? That would be, no, but, I'll, oh, you do? Oh, how odd, um, how unusual. Um, well, it, I got a little carried away um, with somebody else's credit card in, um, and um, it, it's not a proud story or a happy one, it's just typical of uh, the sort of, can I say the word arse in a cathedral? It's typical <laughs> of the kind of arse I was. Um, and I, well, I was under the influence of an enormous number of different things. Uh, I was a very excitable child, very hypermanic, and very, um, I loved Evelyn War and P.G. Woodhouse and uh, The Great Gatsby and things like that. And so I spent a lot, of, um, a lot of money, which wasn't my own, but belonged to the bank, not to the owner of the credit card. I'd, um, my father had once lost his credit card, and, uh, uh, and he had called up the bank as soon as he noticed. And uh, he told me, I remember, that it meant that he wouldn't be liable. So as soon as I stole this credit card, I, I called up the bank, pretending to be the person whose card it was, saying that I'd, I'd, I'd lost it. Um, so that my feeling was it was the bank that would suffer. And um, it, there's, no, there's no way of saying this was a moral point of view, though these days I suppose anyone who can screw anything out of a bank would be applauded down the street. But um, <laughs> at the time, <laughs> at the time it was not good. But anyway, I ended up um, this, at 17... In a, in a three-piece suit with a, 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 a stiff collar and a tie, um, sipping cocktails in the American bar of the Ritz Hotel. I mean, it really is. I, I was so slappably stupid uh, thinking I would get away with this. I went all round various uh, counties of, uh, of England until eventually in Swindon, of all unlikely places, um, uh, the, the credit card was questioned. I was marched into the police station and, uh, and the whole sorry truth came out that I was wanted in... Uh, seven counties, and um, uh, it was all very grim. Um, so I went to this uh, prison. Uh, it was called Puckle Church, which is such a sweet name, Puckle Church. It sounds, you know, a little cottage with roses around the door. And, um, Welcome to Puckle Church, my dear. But it wasn't like that. It was a, it was a West Country horror house. Um, uh, and um, pretty grim, full of, mostly for youngish offenders. I think you were aged between 18 and 21 uh, at Puckle Church. Um, 
Now, of course, I'd been sent away to boarding school from the age of seven, so, so a prison was a breeze. It couldn't have been more easy and straightforward, but it was jolly difficult for, for, for everyone else, because for most of them, it was the first, first time they'd ever, ever uh, spent a night away from home. So I, I found myself in the opposition of, of sort of comforting some of these, uh, some of these uh, well, they were kids, really, but they were 18, 19, 20, 21, mostly in there for what's known as um, twocking, Twalking and TDA. I never quite understood the difference. Twalking is taking without the owner's consent, and TDA is taking and driving away. Um, anyway, that's what's what most West Country kids did, uh, and it got them inside. So there I am um, on, the, on the floor of the prison, um, and I'm about to go to court the next day, and I'm thinking to myself, this, this is terrible. I've got no A-levels. Um, I'm 18 now. Uh, I've, I've really got no chance in life. I've missed the boat. All my contemporaries are about to go to university, and I'm in a prison. And I thought to myself, this is madness. I like reading, I like ideas, I like thinking. I'm not a, a fool, am I? but I'm going to waste my life. What have I done with myself? And I had a, a, a sort of Damascene mo moment, scales fell from my eyes, and I realized that come what may, I would have to find a way of getting myself exams if I had to work at some sort of job and then in the evenings go to find an evening class or, or even do it at home or something, but I would have to get A-levels. Uh, I arrived back in uh, my beloved Norfolk um, and on the first day uh, back, first full day, uh, I got a, there was a little coach that used to go from Reefham all the way into Norwich about, about seven in the morning and I got into it and I walked up the Ipswich Road into Norwich City College, which I'd heard, and someone had told me that they did do a one-year A-level course and that they didn't ask too many questions. <laughs> and um, so there was, a, there was a queue, and by extraordinary coincidence that makes one almost feel this whole thing was meant to be, it was the second day of registration in which people were applying to, to, to do these various courses. And I would find myself at the back of the queue, um, and I eventually worked my way forward, and there was a little twinkly man, his name was Peter Butler, I don't know if anyone from the college remembers Peter Butler, um, and, and blue eyes and, um, and a cheerful disposition, and he said, what can we do for you? And I said, I would like to do A-levels in um, English, French, and History of Art, please. He said, oh dear, I'm afraid they're all completely oversubscribed. English is, is well oversubscribed. French, we might be able to get you into French. History of Arts oversubscribed as well. I said, no. He said, excuse me? I said, no, 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 I have to do this. He said, well, yes, but perhaps another subject. I said, no, no. Listen, this is going to sound very strange, but if you let me do English, French, and History of Art, I will get A grades in all of them and an S level grade one in all of them, and I will get a scholarship to Cambridge University. He looked at me as if I was insane <laughs> and said, we don't do Cambridge entrance. Cambridge in those days had a separate entrance exam. And said, we don't teach for the Cambridge. And they said, no, I'll do that off my own. If, if, I'll pay one of your staff to invigilate it. I'll get a job in the evenings and, and I'll... And he looked at me. I said, please, this has to happen. And it seemed like a minute in which he looked at me and I looked at him in, in the kind of desperation. And then he let out a big sigh and said, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this, but all right. And he ticked the boxes. First English lecture, Monday morning, nine o'clock, be there. And that was the hinge on which my entire life swung. That man, that act of kindness, that institution, Norwich City College. Without that, I don't know what or who I would be. It's hard to imagine, but I do know this was a lifeline. It was a civilized and brilliant educational establishment. It was, amongst others, it suited people like me who were that little bit older, who were no, we were not treated as children, we were students, not pupils, we weren't kids, we were, it was up to us to work, it was assumed we wanted to learn. The standard of teaching was astonishingly high. And, and in the year, fortunately, I, I was as good as my word and got the good results and, and, um, and did indeed get a scholarship to, to Cambridge. And it was at that university um, that the rest of my life was, um, I suppose, decided. I, I, the, the, the second hinge in my life, if you like, was that at the beginning of my 
third year, and I've been doing a lot of acting, uh, and one of my best friends, who was this brilliant actress, who was in the same year as me, reading English also, Emma Thompson. And, uh, and I'd written this play for, for some other students to do and for myself to have a part in. Um, and she, I was put on in Edinburgh, and she came to Edinburgh with a friend of hers that she wanted me to meet. And uh, he, was very, he was quite tall, nearly as tall as me, had rather sort of red triangular marks on his cheeks. And uh, she introduced him. I, I, I didn't really take in his name. And, and I said, hello. And he said, hello. And um, <laughs> that was sort of it, really. He said he liked the play. And I said, thank you. And then at the beginning of the year, Emma came to my room and said, look, you've really got to get to know Hugh. I said, Hugh? Who's Hugh? Who? Who, Hugh, 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 who? She said, the chap I introduced you to in, in, in Edinburgh. I said, oh, with the, the sort of flags on his cheeks and blood. She said, yes. And she told me the story of uh, Hugh, who had come, he'd come to the university to row, essentially. He had no academic uh, uh, ambitions. Um, he read archaeology and anthropology. I think he went to one lecture and decided he didn't like it very much. Um, but he did like propelling boats through water. Don't know why. It's a bizarre thing to want to do. Um, if you're a galley slave or, or a convict, fine. But uh, to do it voluntarily seems, well, perverse. Um, but he'd been to, to Eton College, where they do this kind of thing, I believe. And um, uh, so, but in his first year, he got uh, glandular fever. So he couldn't, uh, he couldn't row in the, in the boat race, which is what he would, wanted to do. Um, and some school friend of his from Eton said, um, well, actually, you're really funny. It was so funny. Why don't you go to join the footlights? By the time we are, with Emma taking me round to his rooms to meet him properly, he, he's now president of the footlights and, and he needs someone to write with and to perform with. And, he, uh, and Emma thinks we might get on. So I arrive uh, at his door and the, it's a knock on it and it op it's opened by Hugh's girlfriend at the time, Katie, whom I knew a bit. And Hugh's sitting on, on a bed with a guitar and he's, he's strumming a song and goes, hello. And I go, hello again. And Hollow, hollow, lots of hollowing. And, um, and he says, I've just written a song. And he plays the song, and it's a very funny song. And I make a tiny suggestion of a, of a lyric, and he, he, he adds that, and then, and then pulls out a sketch he's been working on, and we write on. And then four hours later, we've written two sketches. We haven't had a cup of coffee. We haven't spoken to each other in any other sense. It was a most extraordinary feeling. It's like falling in love, only collaborative love. You meet someone with whom you work instantly and at ease. And since that moment, he's been my, my best friend. I, we communicate daily. He's in America doing apparently a TV series. I don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it, that was the second hinge. But it was entirely dependent on the first. The meeting with Hugh meant that we did a show at Edinburgh that, uh, that won an award and the BBC showed it. And, um, then we did a TV series, and um, then Blackadder and I went Meh, a lot, and um, <laughs> and um, and so uh, um, a, a, a career of sorts was born. But it all started here in Norwich, and it all started with Peter Butler in that frozen moment, weighing up whether or not he was going to take a risk on someone urgently eager and desperate to be educated, and Norwich City College provided it. And for that reason, I will never forget it. I will never cease to be grateful for what it's done in such a perfect way. Not a mollycoddling way, not a stern authoritarian way, but a civilized way equals um, the lecturers were gold. And I believe they still are. The standard gets higher and higher each year. And Norwich, the city, and Norfolk County should be immensely proud of this institution. You've heard what new honors have been heaped on its head, the Queen's Award this year. Um, this is a really special place and uh, I, it gave me nothing but joy to be asked to come here and I hope all of you who've won your degrees and awards and I'm sure under many circumstances much harder than mine um, will agree with me that this is a, it, it, it may not have the imprimatur of Cambridge or, or Oxford or, or Durham or, or, or anything like that but it means so much more, it means so much more. To me this is the hardest one prize I ever had was the, 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 the awards I got from here. And so I thank you. I congratulate you, your friends, family, parents and children, and, uh, and, I, and I thank the college for giving me this opportunity to thank it. Thank you. Thank you.